Anambra US Association Incorporated Headquarters Houston, Texas Kaije Aha Here wa in a memo wo ka der ya Oda kwale foko o Hey bani no Nda bu petro sign O mo abo Anambra Kedina Houston, Texas Peter of Odile Zaswanya Hi chief Valentine Osibo, watching a mele, Ike Houston, Texas. Dinye Chief Fred Obuto, Ike Kuno Nweya, Andai Chief. Okwa Jani Jedala, Afe Okulu Kane Me, Okwa Naka Kati Waga, Sinonga Bigane Jani Jedala. Ganale kenene kukajibia Unyambo doza 
have all I we are, we are all waiting to see what is going to happen today. And we promise you, on behalf of the committee, we promise you that we see that this is a time that you say is well spent. This is a time that you say is well spent. So once more, I welcome all the other We thank you. So much. I want to introduce the person that is going to be running with this issue. The person we have in our list today is he's an international lawyer with expertise in human rights, international security, peace, conflict, social inclusion, and development in general. She holds a master's degree from the Fletcher School of Law and Economics, Boston University. She is the first Nigerian woman to address United Nations Security Council on the issue of international peace and security. She has over 25 years international experience working for multi literal organizations including United Nations and Commonwealth, advising, coordinating, and administering training to government representatives, donors, civil society, women organizations, and other stakeholders. She has lived in four continents, Africa, Asia, North America, Europe. She has undertaken under assignment assignment with governments and donors in Pacific and the Caribbean. At the UN, people are not Celebrating the 
late Professor Adediji. That's the famous economist at Seventy. She wrote on modernization, globalization, and African political economy. In the case of Nigeria, in the case of Nigeria, in Africa, in the case of Nigeria, she wrote on African development and government strategies in the 21st century. She wrote on looking back and looking forward by self publishing She has undertaken several cons consultancies on issues of development in general. She drafted UNDP's policy development on conflict and contributed to several training manuals on conflict analysis, public health, social innovation, violence against women, culture, and currently, she is an international consultant. Ade is going to be I this morning. This woman with so much achievement. This humble woman. This woman that is willing to help us to take our culture as people to the next dimension. I hear that you
It seems like it's a joke. It's 
not of job. There's a reason I'm doing these things, and hopefully I'll be able to explain it. It's okay. She has never been bitten by her by the brain. And it's possible. It is possible. And I will tie it in. Let me jump and say to you, this shows some level of diversity, difference. But there are other areas, being a woman, being more, being an adult, which is part of you. So I'm going somewhere with this. Please stay with me. If you have ever lost someone in your entire life, whether it's great grandfather, grandmother, son, daughter, stand up. Anybody, if you have lost somebody in your entire life. Now, we will come back to this game later on, but if you want the best for what is happening today, clap your hands. Uh, sit down and we can get started. Thank you. Let me say a couple of things. And sometimes you may find that it's repeated, but that's because I want the message to actually sink in. We will get to the definition of what capacity building is while we're doing it and how it can be achieved, some of the factors that will help us to achieve capacity building. But one of the major things you want to learn today is that capacity building is a process that will help you to grow in all the areas that the association may be wanting to grow. It could be looking for funding, it could be organizing events, it could be helping charitable homes like the hospitals or motherless babies' home. Capacity building will help you to identify the talents and the skills because everybody created by God, everybody of God has a skill. You have talents. If you are tall, the other person is short. There's something the tall person will not be able to do as fast as the short person. So we all have value, we all have skills. If we bear that in mind, then we will know and then be able to say, look, we want to draw the skills and the talents from everybody because that's what will make you. As Debo say, there is unity. There is strength in unity. Nipani Nasi, and I will sometimes interject Debo because I want to believe everybody here, now me. Forgive me, I have two people who are attending with me. They happen to be two uh, professional engineer women. One of them is sitting with me. Um, she's uh, originally from Cameroon, but she's very Nigerian. Another one is coming later on. Okay, um, but she's not yet here. Uh, she's not yet here. So if we remember that everybody has a skill, everybody has a value, everybody has a talent, and the talent that Maria has may not be the talent talent that Stella has, but they're talents. Maria may be able to run faster than Stella, or Stella may be able to do what is better than Maria. These are all talents. And it is a combination of those talents that constitute what we call diversity. And if you cannot manage diversity, you're not likely to be a good leader. Bear that in mind. I will start with the first slide is just about a few faces of people who have been leaders before. That's first slide. So we're not really looking into it. It just has the title of the day. Now this is an important one. It's not about capacity building, but it has an effect on capacity building. Why do I say that? And this will also affect me. If I keep yap, yap, yap talking today without getting participation from you, what would I achieve? Just what I already know, that's all. Because I'm speaking, talking. There is value in listening to other people. So learn that. Learn not to be the one to talk, 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 talk. Because if I talk, if I'm telling you about A, B, C, D right now, the only thing I know is A, B, C, D. 
But if I decide, okay, one more number, please take over and say something. She might be able to then teach me EFGH. So this is about, I'm going somewhere with this. It's all diversity. So that you begin to learn to checkmate yourself. Don't put yourself in a situation where you are the only one who is dictating, talking, talking. And at the same time, when you get to other slides, you will also need to learn that when you are speaking or talking, people are listening to you. And when other people begin to talk, you need to do the same. What is good for the news? They say it's good for the gather. So, Dalai Lama is one of the public figures we all know, the Tibetan monk. And he said this a few years ago with the late Archbishop Desmond II from South Africa that when you talk, you are only repeating what you already know. But if you listen to other people, you will learn something new. So, remember that let it be one of the vignettes, one of the take home messages. And use that to begin to model your behavior or model what you do in life because it will help you. What we're going to try and go through today, we have had a short introduction. Are we going to get the slides? We, 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 we will speak about that. Thank you so much for reminding me. Uh, we will speak about that. I can make that available. And the other thing, thank you so much for interjecting. The other thing is, if you, at any point, if I have said something that you want to clarify or you want to ask a question, please just raise your hand. I will hold my thought and take on that question because this is supposed to be inclusive and participatory. That's the only way we can achieve what we want. So if we're going to go through today, there will be two sessions. This session hopefully will last us till about 12 o'clock, but of course we will have those ice breakers again at a team coffee. Uh, in between our bathroom uh, uh, time. And after 12 o'clock, when you have your lunch or your tea break, when we come back, we'll be doing another session. But quickly to say that I'm hoping today that we would, as we're working towards capacity building, some of the issues that we'll be looking at is the definition of what capacity building is, even though I've tried to set that earlier. And I'll be looking at emotional intelligence. Personalities, because all of us here we have different personalities. And then the impact of the relationship between emotional intelligence, personality, and leadership. Because at the end of the day, what we want to ensure is that these three factors, emotional intelligence, personality, and leadership, helps Umar to grow helps Umar to achieve its mission and its goals. So those are the three things that we'll be honing into as we go along today. And in, to be able to do that, I will also look at you know, understanding personalities and its impact on leadership, the major types of leadership, the qualities of a good leader, the characteristics. How can you measure your leadership skills? What we call the 80 20 Pareto principle or rule, and then the do no harm. Because most times, when we set out to do things, we have good intentions, but sometimes it could be that the approach you take in wanting to do that thing would actually then turn in as if it is bad. But usually, people have good intentions if they want to do certain things. And the approach, I'm sure some of you are some of the Maybe from Ogidi or Ogosti or Achina or Achari, you would have heard the name Onubo. Yeah. I asked that question once. Onubo literally means mouth is tight. But it isn't what it is because we know that in Ibodan, words actually have different meanings. Onubo literally mouth is tight. But the true meaning is that what comes from the mouth and how it comes out is actually what is likely to cause trouble or cause fight between two. So if we hold that in our thoughts, we will remember that principle by a lady called Mary Anderson, that when you set out to do something, 
make sure that that good intention doesn't turn to harm other people. Mostly because of your approach. And then we will get into transformation. I use South Africa because, like some of us, they went through difficult challenges. But in South Africa, they have something they call Ubuntu. I'm sure some of you may have heard it. Okay. 
end result of the law. And let me give you an example of the do no harm. If I get up, good morning. <laughs> Already, she is aware that the tone of my voice doesn't reflect that good morning. I have good intention to greet her, right? But the way I have done it may be that I quarrel with my husband. And I can't do that. So you see, I have good intention. But my approach ended up having the relationship between us. And I will speak about this because in building organizations, you are working towards a relationship of a group of people. And if there is lack of respect or trust or friendship amongst those relations in that group, that group has serious wounds and scars. And if those wounds and scars don't heal, that group won't be as effective as it ought to be. So we have to bear these things in mind. And when I get into emotional intelligence, you will understand why these things are important. I've given you an example with the reading I went to do with her. Her awareness of my approach of salutation makes it very clear to her. I don't seem to have very good intentions of that. Even though within myself, I want to claim that I have good intentions. So, essential key is communication. Your manner of must be one that carries respect. There is that saying that we all know respect is what reciprocates is Respect is reciprocal. And it doesn't matter. It could be that I get up and I'm speaking, and Stella gets up, she wants to speak. But I'm still speaking. Then she starts speaking over me. And that's not very respectful. Even if what I am saying doesn't make sense. Stella, please give me the opportunity to speak. Let me finish my nonsensical. And then you can take over and say yours. That's fairness. That's everything. That's important. So trust. As we do this, the way you react to people, it actually begins to put what? Trust currency into your back. If the way I had greeted her was good, tomorrow when she sees me, she will say, ah, I did the Elsie in DJ. Right? But if it wasn't nice because you saw my tone, tomorrow when she sees me, maybe she goes to her dear and says, look at her. She thinks she's something. When she's not, who does she think she is? You know, some of these things may look like uh, something small, but it begins to damage your relationship with people. And when that, you know, relationship is damaged or scarred, like a wound, it affects the trust. So we begin to have either trust deficit or trust credit. The choice is yours. If there is trust deficit in whom home because people are beginning to form cliques, and uh, I don't like that president. I don't like this. And uh, this one is that. And uh, that and uh, that. It would affect the goal or the mission of the organization because people now are no longer focusing on the goal of the organization. They are beginning to think of themselves. Empowerment is a word I really try not to mention and I'll try not to repeat it over this day. The reason that is bastardized, especially by our people, forgive me. But essentially, if you truly want to empower someone, you will give them a fair opportunity. And that fair opportunity, like I have said, and now the same example I will use is speak less. Learn to listen to other people. Learn to give other people the opportunity for them to do something. I'm sure there are people, and I'll get into this when I get into personalities. Some of us are very extroverted. We're very outgoing. But some are very
more introvert. I can tell you because I know her. She is more like an introvert. I am extrovert. But in personalities too, your fact, the factors of the environment can affect you. I am one who has a knack for time. I'm very time conscious. And so, in a place like Houston, I don't like to go to parties because they don't start early. They don't start on time. I'm not saying it's good or bad, it's just my choice. It's my personality. So, in doing empowerment, try and understand what personality you are dealing with because it will help you to go a lot of Focus on what I call TMG. TMG. Team. Focus on the team. It's not about Stella. It's not about Lucaria. It's not about Ife Imas. It's not about Chima. It's not about Chima. It's not about Ada. It's not about Hajia. It's not about the war. It's about the team. The end is the mission. What is the mission? The purpose of Umo. That's where your focus ought to be. Don't spend time talking about Stella or Maria. Talk about the purpose for which Umo was set up. The mission, the goal. So that's the TMG, the team, the mission, the goal. In summary, talk about us as a group, not I. I. I did this. I did that. No. Umo did that. I did this on behalf of Umo. This is not a personal organization. And once you bear that in your mind, you will begin to work towards that TMG, the team, the mission, and the goal. And hopefully, if you do the right, you will achieve the goal for which this organization will set up. Say no to silos. Silos simply is, mm, I did it, I did it. It's me who did it. No, work as a team. I work with this community that did this. Intentionally, there were one or two people who I know before this time that will tell you that I did not talk to them. Even when they lifted the phone or tried to write to me about something, I refused to answer them. The reason being that I have been informed reliably that there was a committee set up to deal with me on this capacity building. So everybody else, I didn't want to deal with. That's because I want to respect the committee. Let them do their work. It was only on one occasion I stepped aside and that's because I couldn't get to the chair of the committee, she was at work, and I needed to. That surprise that I would show you at the end of the day, about 2 o'clock or just before 2, I had to reach out to you, because I knew she would pick up the phone. So it's very important that, you know, when we are going through the um, things that we're doing, that we give people the opportunity to showcase their talents. Because there are people who, based on their personality, they may not be as outgoing, but that doesn't mean they don't have talents or values. They do. But you need to nudge them to bring it up. Delegate, not overly direct. I'm spending time on this because these are like the take home. If you forget everything else you see today, remember this. When you delegate, like let's say the vice president or the president or the chair of the committee, if you delegate, delegate work and say, I want you, 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 I let them to do this. Don't keep following them behind. A good leader, when you find a talent and give them a job to do, you actually just But if you keep following them, have you done this? Have you done that? You are keeping without realizing it. And that's where do no harm again comes in. You're beginning to doubt, create doubt in their capacity. And that doesn't make a good leader. So please remember that. When you dedicate, even though you're a leader, let them work with it. It's only if they haven't done it well when they come back to you that they can. Okay, let's make changes here. Remember that, please. Be accountable, be transparent. Accountability goes both ways, both for the leader and for the follower. You cannot be wanting to hold your followers accountable if you are not accountable yourself. Charity, they say, begins more. So when we get into leadership too, you will see self modeling And one of the examples that will uh, one of the quotes that we use today is a quote from Bill Clinton. He says, let lead, lead, lead. So 
and most African countries or most countries where our people reside. But we are saying if you truly want to be transformed and be a good leader, please lead by the power of your example. I hope that is clear. Yes. Lead by the power of your example. Because if you take, for instance, if you have a little girl or a little child, and you tell that child as you're bringing them, bringing him or her up, when you wake up, Say good morning to everybody in the house who is older than you. And you yourself, if you wake up, if you have a husband or a father or a mother, you wake up and say, Papa, good morning. Mama, good morning. That's a good example. That child will learn. But if you're the kind that gets up in the morning, you see your dad, you see your mom, you just walk past. And you expect the child, well, what would she, he or she learn? So you have to be accountable first before you can expect accountability from other people. Be transparent in what you do. Ubuntu, as I spoke to you, South Africa, is essentially about togetherness, and that's what Omoku represents. It's actually how you. What you do, how you speak, can affect other people within the group. How your actions can impact people. Because remember, it's about the group. Remember the TMG, the team, the mission, and the goal. So essentially, the reason I got in Ubuntu is because it's a concept that really captures or encapsulates that togetherness. So that if you're about to do something, if you're about to say something, think about how would it affect the group, not an individual. It's about your society, it's about how you can push Umoku to grow. So it's the greater growth of the group of Umoku. So, Chris, I'm not sure what He's up, he's back on. So the common thread within Ubuntu is human relations, how to make sure that it comes together. It helps both individuals, it helps communities, nations, it will help more, I believe, to strive towards the mission of their goal. Essentially, it's about the group, us. Change, transform, so that you can perform better. What can be done, how it can be done, the strategy for the clear vision, and what we know as MIE, which is monitoring and evaluation. We will get to that later on at some point today. So, capacity building, let me give you uh, an official definition, and this is from the United Nations Development Program, UNDP. Capacity uh, development or capacity building, I will use it. It's the same thing. I prefer capacity development because it's more encompassing, it's broader. Capacity building or capacity development is the process of developing and strengthening the skills, instincts, abilities, talents, processes, including resources that a group like Homo needs to survive, to adapt, to excel and thrive in a fast-changing world. Our world is changing and very fast. So if you truly, and this is the major reason why one of the things, it doesn't have to be me. I thank you for the opportunity that I'm starting it. One of the things I would encourage in my recommendation to you on the way forward is that you must find a way for this organization to ensure that at least once a year, you do some sort of training that will help to extrapolate, bring out the talents, the instincts, the values of the mission of your group, so that it can impact your environment. And that environment doesn't have to be environment in Houston. 
it has to be beyond. But because, remember that you live in a fast changing world, you need capacity building because strategies change. In one of the organizations where I worked, I always was put in a strategy for me to solve, what we call the strategy department. And that's because God has given me the eye to see what the big picture is. So I'm able to say, hmm, this is happening right now, but maybe in two or three years' time, we need to be changing. And so I usually would say, ring jig. So, you know, modify whatever strategy or whatever approach that you're using. Modify it so that you'll be able to catch up with what is happening, how things are changing. I'll give you a perfect example. 20 years ago, we didn't have Instagram, Facebook. I have a friend today who was in law school with me, and she married a boy who was also in our law school, but she decided she wasn't going to practice law. And so she makes changes, very lovely changes, and she then makes clothes. But she has realized that every time she makes a boo, very simple, I know I'm always backing weights, so you know I, I, I love the boobos because it helps me to cover all the folds that I you know. I wish I was an Indian woman. If I was, I'd be able to wear my sari and not care, you know. But so this is my friend. I call her Lem Lem, but her name is Clementina. Every time she comes up with one sort of boo, she makes one and sends to me, and I didn't know why. I wouldn't pay her. But she said to me, you know, sis, every time you have one more of your rules, in fact, the first two more, full disclosure, the first two more events that Maria and Stella invited me to, I wore a black and white blue and put my red uh, pin on because I'm British. And I sent the photograph to her. She posted it on Instagram. I didn't know. I don't belong to the social media. I'm a shy person. But I can be very loud too. So I carried that sort of personality. <laughs> and she said as soon as she posted it, she had about seven people wanting to make that same thing because of the way that I put it together. So she now uses me as a guinea pig. <laughs> when, you know, when, she, when she has. But I love that. I love being a guinea pig because I get a free boo-boo. <laughs> so it's, it's very important, you know, that. Um, It's very important that you keep up with what is happening around you. So as I was saying, there was no Facebook, there was no social media before, but now it's there. So one of the recommendations again that I will give to you, if you truly want to grow, is you have to invest in yourself, not just training, but in some of the other processes or strategies, including building a website. And it has to be done professionally, so that that website can tell the world who you are, what you do, some of the things that you do. And I, I actually made a, a big mistake, forgive me for that, but it would have come out later. One of the things you must learn, whatever meeting or event like this one that you're doing, you must find a consultant who's a good writer or one of you who is a good writer so that you can document as a report. And when you document as a report, you may need to add photographs, you may need to add slides or whatever, but it will help you to document and begin to look more professional, that it will distinguish you from, I don't want to say the other group so that they don't hold me down, but it will make you distinct and truly Unique because I dare you to teach it. I am a teacher. So consider that, but that's one of the things. Capacity building, capacity uh, development, I've said, is you know, interchangeable. And some of the examples of capacity building would be the training like this, it could be a project like the uh, donation to motherless babies home or hospital, it could be updating yourself technologically. Somebody comes in to teach you, even if it's how to make
doing PowerPoints or whatever. It could be the results, the end results that you will have after the training. The, I mean, is that something that you have learned from that training? That's capacity. Because we already have the talent, but sometimes we need to be able to push it. It could be just how to identify partners, those who have the same kind of mission or goal that you have, so that you do what? You partner with them. Building synergy. Uh, the people say, and you call mommy, oh. and there is what strength in unity and diversity. So partnership is very key. These are some of the examples of uh, capacity building. Transformation is that change, but all of that will not happen if you don't have a clear vision of what you want. What is your goal? What is your mission? And then, what are the best strategies to achieve that goal or the mission? These are the things. And to be able to do that, it can't be done by one person. It has to be inclusive. As I have said, I know some people, and I will use the food. There are some people who can make the love rights here. There are some people who can make avatar. I love avatar. And there are some people that I will freely tell, look, oh, when it comes to Sarah, I'm willing to compete with anybody who wants to stand out. But when it comes to Abacha, I have zero. When I wrote Waye, for instance, back in the days, I had uh, first, uh, whatever they call it, grade uh, um, one. But in that grade one, I had S9 in mathematics. <laughs> yes, I had S9 in mathematics. What boosted me and kept me in that great one was English, literature, history. Those were my strengths. Nine in mathematics, which means I failed to plan. So you have to be able to say to yourself, these are the things that are. And I have been talking too much, but before I get into uh, the next slide, which is how we're going to progress emotional intelligence, uh, personality, and leadership. I want us to pay good attention because this is where the real story, the real McCoy starts. Emotional intelligence is like if you want to go to college, you start with primary school, correct? Yes, right. And then graduate to secondary before the tertiary reaches the college. If you want to be a good leader, I have three factors that I want to take us through. The first is what? Emotional intelligence. And what is emotional intelligence? It's just simply your ability to recognize. Your ability to recognize your emotions and how that emotion can impact a relationship that you are building. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Ades. <clears throat> Emotional intelligence, and by the time I get to the personalities and leadership, you will understand why I'm starting at this primary level. Emotional intelligence is your ability to recognize your emotions, manage them well, package them well, because it will impact the relationship. I already gave you an example. Let me give you another example. I have a younger friend here in Houston who is very dear to me. And two days ago she says, Sister L, Sister L, I actually want to ask you to love her because I love your friends that she makes. I don't make it as good as she does. So I said, Eugene, she says, Sister L, there's this white woman in my office. She just wants me to drive to Pasadena. I just try to. And this was almost like Sister so she picked up her phone. And then I said, no, Eugene, drop the phone. I said, drop the phone. She said, she said, I said, drop the phone. So she put her phone down. And I said to her, take a deep breath. She did deep breath. It seems simple. It seems silly. And some of you might be thinking all of this is silly. That's okay. But if you want to pay attention, and stay with me. So I said to 
about you, G? Don't type. Don't write. I took the phone and realized what was happening. The white woman was just doing what? Staging her. And I will give you my own example because I have to, have to learn the manual. I told her, do not type. And as I was saying that to her, one of her friends who she had already spoken to and who knew what was happening, quickly typed in, I am volunteering to go to Pasadena. It's closer to me. That saved the day. Now, if I hadn't been there and she didn't put me in the loop, she was going to almost write offensive words to that white woman. They are the same qualification, but the white woman happens to be called what? A leader. And such people can mess up your career. But what is more important and what I want you to focus on, her emotion at that time, she was already bored up, angry. If I hadn't been there and God using me, she wasn't going to be able to manage it. She would have typed something that the food and control. So emotional intelligence is important. To the extent that you just may have had a quarrel with somebody on the road, somebody in your office or at home, and then you're going to a more community. Before her, she just says, A, or go to jump, A, B. I'm using people's name, please forgive me. I'm not saying this happens. I just have to, you know, make, communicate my example. If you are not able to manage your emotions, it could impact on the relationship. So it's very important. That's why I'm going to get into emotional intelligence and give you the five dimensions of emotional intelligence. Now, personalities. Because we are all different persons, we are created differently, and no one personality is better than the other. I will also get you into some little exercise later on on personalities and how the differences. But those differences actually make up what we call diversity. And there is nothing wrong with diversity. As they say, it can go So you can't have it both ways. But that doesn't mean that because I am not as tall as you are, that I don't have value. No. And we have to begin to see values in each and every person. And then go to teach some um, I've had to learn. But I don't know. One or another. Um, I'm going to go to the other. Or the other. Or the other. Or the other. Or the other. Phenomenally. Crystal down. I've had to kill Crystal. I've had to learn some of these things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
likely to be able to manage the diversity of those personalities. And that's what makes or transforms you to a good leader. I hope we're making some sense here. Yes. What is leadership? Leadership is simply your ability to influence people, not by shouting or by power, but your ability to influence through persuasion, through inspiration, or through example. That's what leadership is all about. If you're not leading by example, I'm not sure that you can influence me. If you are the kind who will come and say, eh, everybody, wear uh, only green t-shirts, and then on that day we show up with bread. There's no example there. You have to lead by example. So we will do, as I keep saying, if you cannot manage diversity, which shows that all of us are different, but then you cannot be a good leader. It's certainly not so uh, easy. And I'm going to, if you allow me, I'm going to take you through the internet and show you a video on emotional intelligence. It's just to break some of the burden. I'm sure that you're getting tired of me uh, speaking. Thank you. 
free to stop me at any time. Just uh, raise your hand. So that was just a, a simple video capturing emotional intelligence. And to quickly run through the five dimensions, it's asking you, it says self-awareness. And this is simply that you are aware of your emotions. I woke up this morning and I'm not feeling too well. Sometimes, for some of us who are women, when you're going through uh, the previous days, you might wake up with a tummy ache. And that just, it just messes up your day because you're having cramps. Be aware of that. Be aware of your own emotions because it's going to impact how you react to people or how you react to it. It could, it could actually make you snap at people even when you're not the sort of person that will snap easily. So self-awareness is very key. Self-motivation. And this is essentially that you, no matter what obstacles, it could be difficult people. As a leader, Maria may be running into someone and she thinks, oh, this person is a difficult person. But your self-motivation to say, look, I'm going to persist doing what I'm doing in the face of the challenges or in the face of this difficult person. That's what is going to make you what an emotionally intelligent person who can what? Manage different personalities, different circumstances, and be one of the leader. Self management is that managing of emotions. Are there any teachers? Are there any teachers? I am a teacher. People, you know, open up. Take, take a little bit of time and look at yourself. So put it on vibrate at the very worst case. Sometimes my chain of thought is uh, can be distorted uh, from these distractions. Thank you. So self-management and to open this self-motivation. Let me give you an example with myself. At a point in my career, when I was still at, at the public world, particularly this time I was with the United Nations back in New York, I, 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 most times I was in the field. I was working with 16 white people. Good people. Everybody has goodness in them. But this particular one, I think I couldn't teach it. I was working with 16 white people. I was number two technically. The person who was number one, I was actually instrumental to bring it out into the organization. But we all know what differences and difficulties discrimination that we face because of the color of our skin. But also, I will let you into a secret. Sometimes you don't blame the, uh, the West. I blame the Africanness. And the reason I will say this to you is that if you do not know it, I have over 27 years, cumulative years of working for the United Nations and its agencies, which means the United Nations Secretary to New York, UNDP, the Development Program, UNICEF, the agency that was for children, or UN Women, which was the last one that was created as a merger, as a, you know, of uh, three different agencies. They used to be UNIFED, but it's no longer. And then the initial uh, division of advancement of women was where I was first recruited into. So, Within this division, where I had 16 white people, this person who was number one, I helped to come into Unifem at the time when she was working. Now, what the way the UN is run is by whom contributes money. They tell you that he who plays the part and it's the same way Uncle Sam. Now, incidentally. The U.S. doesn't give the greatest contribution because the U.N. is run by contributions from member states, and there's 197, I believe, member states. That's the yeah. countries of the world. The country that contributes the greatest is actually Japan, but recruitment into the United Nations is based on the contributions your countries make. A country like ours. Even though we have all that oil money, most times they will not even pay their contribution. 
six months, seven months. Just like the run the embassies, you go there and you know, they'll tell you there are no passports. It's unfortunate, but it's reality. So based on that contribution, some of these white people get better positions than some of us, not because they are more qualified than us. But what happens and why I'm talking about this on self-motivation to also share my own mistakes, hopefully, that I have learned from, is that this person who became number one that I had actually helped come in. At a point, family duties meant that she had to leave the organization. But when she was going to, to take up a teaching appointment, she wasn't so sure whether they would tell her. So after nine months, they would tell her no more work. To make sure that she had sustenance, she was looking for someone within our unit, the peace and security, who was her best friend. So what they would do is, 16 of them, when we have a meeting, usually when we come in, if it's a meeting that requires presentation, she will speak and then I will be expected to speak. And I noticed that as soon as I start to speak, eyes are crossing the room because they'd already discussed what they wanted to do. Now, what was also unfortunate was that within that 17 that made up the group, I was the only one that had at least field experience from four continents, and that created a threat within them. But I didn't manage it well. That's the truth. Because if I was aware, since I already knew that they had an agenda, if I know what I know today, I quit the job. I would not have quit. I'm not regretting it because I didn't know what I know today is that. But I'm saying this to you so that you know that even if you are a leader and you have different causes, like difficult people, there are some people who are difficult because they have different personalities. So even if you are a leader and you run into difficulties or difficult people, learn to self-manage because if you self-manage, you will be able to manage that person. Sometimes managing that person could mean ignoring whatever they are doing. It takes two to tango, yes. If I come in now and slap you both, and she doesn't retaliate, I will begin to look like a fool. But if I do both, and she says, eh, more, what, what? The fight starts. So that's self-motivation. Be aware. Manage yourself first. Self-management. Empathy. A sense of how other people may be feeling. A sense of how other people may be feeling. It's important. That's why the, the, the job of a leader is difficult. But I'm taking you, this is a primary level. Emotional intelligence. You need to know these things. Have the empathy. It could be that, yes, I remember only because I got involved. I'll pick up the phone to call her four times in a day because I'm trying to put together the program we have in this particular call. She will not return my call. But you see, because I know what I know today now, that empathy, sense of how she could be feeling, I had to employ that. It's very important.
please circulate amongst yourself. If you have any extra, uh, pass it on to the table. Just take one copy. This will be something that I want you all to answer the questions. And let me say that there is no right or wrong answer. Please do not be shy. You don't need to write your name. Five minutes, do whatever you want within this wall. If you need to use the bathroom, please do so. Five minutes, we need to be back. If you're not back in five minutes, we do have ten slides in this morning segment. We started late to start with. So what uh, we and unless what we're saying or what I am speaking is not communicating to you. Uh, if I don't finish this, you will be losing. Yeah. Unless you don't find the things important or realistic. If I don't finish the slides, it will eat into the lunch break. Your lunch break instead of 30 minutes will have to go down. And then... And then do the teaching. Let's be clean going into personality. And then a couple of things that I want to say about personalities, and some I've already said, which is that we have different personalities. No one personality is better than the other. No one personality is more superior. We are just different, diverse, yet unique. Personality is important because it reflects your values, the things that are important to you. And there is no substitute for knowing the people who are in the group with you. There's no substitute. There's nothing that can help you manage a group better, like understanding the people. And you can understand them if you know their personalities. So personality is important because it showcases what is important to you. Personality is important because it teaches you, it brings out the values of simply what is important to you. I'll give you an example. If I call Maria on the phone on Monday, leave her a message. I don't hear from her. Tuesday, I call her again. She doesn't answer. She doesn't return my call. I call her again Wednesday. Leave her a message, she doesn't ring. I will begin to ask myself, am I important enough to marry? So personality actually teaches you what is important. Because life teaches us that if something is important to you, you will pursue it. Mm -hmm. You will go after it. If it's not important to you, you have that I don't care attitude. And like I said, your attitude. So it's important that you understand personalities because that would make you understand what is important to the person that you are in the same group with. And understanding a person's preferred personality style or adapting your interaction approach to that person can take you to go miles to improve both your motivation, your accountability, your style of friendship or relationship with that person. Ultimately, it will help you to what? Improve leadership that will help you to achieve the goals of the organization. Now, I may have to skip one or two slides and not go into details, frankly because we're running short of time and it may not be so uh, important because I want to get to the third I have three slides that would discuss the different schools of thought of personality. Yeah. This is one of them. And this was probably the oldest school of thought that spoke about four types of personalities. They categorized personalities into four categories. And in doing such a classification, one of the, of course, because the world is constantly improving, one of the things other people did was to research on that first school of thought in order to extend it because the world is constantly changing. So this first school of thought I call DISC because the four classifications of personalities type behaviors that they came up with, one is dominance. It's very simple. It's almost speaking about somebody who dominates. Two, 
influence, one who takes time to influence. The third one, steadiness, one who's a little bit steady but still strives to achieve the goal. And then conscientiousness, one who's really conscious about what the people, the task that is assigned to them. I won't waste time on this in, in the interest of time because I want us to get to the most popular uh, school of thought, which is the one that I have distributed that paper for. However, the second school of thought, CSP, chloric, sanguine, phlegmatic, and melancholic. Essentially, what these ones are saying, the first one, which is chloric, is saying that you have a personality who is an outgoing person. And that outgoing person is likely quick to act. Likely quick to act. And in acting, the person's mission or goal is to achieve the mission of the organization or the group or whatever he or she set out to do. That's the chloric person. Very outgoing. I really want to get this. I want you to remember no one person stands as a chloric as that personality. Sometimes an event or an environment, and I'll give you that example when I get to the next slide, an if event can make you move from being a chloric into a sanguine. For instance, on the MBCI, which is the one that I will focus on, I describe myself, and every time that I've done that MBTI test, which has 60 questions, I have to compress this bridge so that you know, I'll be able to manage. I usually will not train more than 25 people. I am extroverted, extraversion, because I'm outgoing. But if I get to a place where I don't really know a lot of people, I record. So, I, so an event or an environment can actually affect your personality. But the general rule is that we are born with certain genes that define certain qualities of our personality. But an environment where you find yourself or an event can actually also alter your personality. But it doesn't alter some of those key core elements of your personality. Am I communicating here? Yes. Okay. So, the chloric is one who is outgoing and task oriented. What's important to the chloric is I want to get this job done. So sometimes the chloric might be seen as one who doesn't care about how are you feeling or this. Mm -hmm. I just need to get this job. But there are times when you want um, Hajia to do something. Hajia is not in the best of moods because maybe she's dealing with something. As a leader, that's where you go back to your emotional intelligence. You need to emotionally aware of the emotions of the people that you're working with. So, chloric, sometimes they all have advantages and disadvantages, like everything in life. Not one single personality is perfect or superior. The, the second one, which is the family, is an outgoing person, but quickly to act, likely to act very quickly as well, but more interested in the people. So the sanguine person spends time with the people so they make sure that the job gets done. But the chloric yeah. focuses on the task, not the people. You see the slight difference there. Now we have the phlegmatic, very reserved person, oriented to personalities as well, or tasks. A people oriented, the phlegmatic. So, I am reserved, but I want to work with people to get the job done. The difference between that and the chloric is that the chloric is not reserved. The chloric is very outgoing. But then the last one, which is the melancholy, very reserved, but also focuses on the task. No one single personality is perfect. They are all different, and that means diverse and diversity is a good thing. And your ability to manage diversity is what makes you the good leader. Remember that. So personality is a very complex thing. Each 
person has a core element of his or her personality that is likely to remain the same throughout. However, over time, uh, personalities can be influenced by factors, including environments. I'll give you another example. If you went through a boarding school, you may have been born someone who is introverted, reserved. You always mind your business, you stay on your own. But you find yourself in a dormitory. In your room, your roommates are these party kind of animals. There's nothing wrong with it. Every Friday night, they hit the hall. Even though you were born introverted, because of the people you are living with, one day they say, I beg, Papa, I think it's a get up job, let me go past it. Let's go. You do it one Friday, another Friday, the Friday. Before you know it, you become like that. That's why sometimes you hear the cliche, tell me who you move with, and I'll tell you what you want. So, an environment can actually, it doesn't change your core personality. But it can influence you in what you do. And every personality has value. Remember that. Every person is a blend of each personality type depending on the circumstance or the issue. No one personality is better or superior. I can't say that more than enough. So these are the three schools of thought. I have gone through the list and the CSPM will be going into the MBTI, but I want you to quickly go into a video that would um, hopefully help you to understand personalities slightly better. Mary, Mother of Mercy. 
that's his order. Uh, their headquarters is based in Oma. Father Jude. Father Jude is a very young, good looking prince. Marietta, my dear friend, I love her dearly, but I always speak to her. And this was because exactly what you described, that cultural difference. But now you find yourself living in the diaspora. What do they say? When you live in Rome, they are like the Romans. You have to be, and remember, when we go back to the slide of emotional intelligence, it says self-awareness. You have to be aware. Not just of yourself, but the environment where you are functioning in. So what happened with Marietta is that during coffee break, we got into this hall. The church hall is where we usually would have a coffee break. And Marietta wanted to speak to Father Jude. Will you ask me please? Because your things are safe to stand up. So let's assume that this is Father Jude. Please, uh, can everybody focus here? Yes, yes. please come mm -hmm. around and do it. It's very important. So this is my friend Marietta. So well, this is Father Jude and I am Marietta. And lunch, coffee break was going on. Three quarters of the people who are in attendance are white people. Very British, and if you know the British, we call ourselves the public. This is Marietta. <laughs> and then I am walking towards them. A white woman must have been in her 70s ran up to me and said, Elsie, Elsie, where is Marietta? Why is Marietta cautioning Father June? Why is she shouting at him? Why is she, why? And I thought to myself, okay. The reason being that, if you know not the very well, which I've shown most of you, most people don't drive cars. Because first, the roads are not as big as America. And even driving the cars costs you a lot of money. Uh, parking spaces is also a problem. So most of us will ride buses or the tubes, which are the trains. And most times, because of the opportunity that God has given me, living with other people, and me learning to be self-aware of the question that I tend to ask us, I have started, and I still do it now because it's a process. We don't change overnight.
where two of us did this couple. Me and my friend, when somebody has come on Tochi, I'm not Tochi, I'm Carol. Then Tochi will be calling them for Carol. So because our tone of voice is high, even on a normal conversation, it will be difficult to tone down. So if you have a way for us to manage it, I don't ask for prescription communication to turn down. If you have a way that we can turn down, you know, because when you speak, you may not be angry, you may not be anything you're talking, they perceive it as being abrupt or loud or rude. And that's the truth of the The truth of the matter is nobody can do it for you. There's no prescription. And I'm giving you, I'm giving you an example that with myself, when I sit in the bus in London, if it means that I'm whispering, if I'm talking to her, I'm saying, you know, say that day would be a good worker. And I saw, and this was what happened. Ah, Marietta, no, you can't do that. So you can do it. Don't ever say it's impossible for you for a prescription. You are the only one who can do it. And if you don't do it, it's going to continuously negatively affect you. Because the people around you, yes, we have that, but we make a conscious effort. It can be done. You can't be louder than my voice, trust me. It's not a competition. But I've had to. There are times when I've had trainings of parliamentarians in Pakistan or in India or Tonga or Fiji. And I don't wear a microphone because I have a loud voice. But if I am in a place where people will not understand that loud voice or they begin to misconstrue or misinterpreted, it is incumbent on me to my voice. Only you can do it for yourself. Nobody can do it for you. There's no prescription for it. I hope that that's a picture of us. And if you remember that emotional intelligence is all about self, so it's not just the leader, president, vice president, uh, chair, um, um, PR. No, it is self, self-awareness. When I gave you that example, I can't go to answer. Good morning. No. Again, self-awareness is emotional intelligence. But if I come to her and say, she understands, she gives me a smile. But if I go to her with that loud voice, she can misconstrue it. And that takes us to that do no harm. Your intention was good for the way you presented it. I hope you answered that. Thank you. So if we can get back into, um, I want us to, Good or bad people. So 
So the first lesson, don't classify someone as a deviant. Yes, the person is presenting some difficulties because the, the subconsciousness, the conscious mind, once you've already cre created that block, this person is a difficult person, this person is that, subconsciously, you've already put on your back to the you may not realize it. Once you have created that mental block, yeah. you are really not going to react to that person on a fair. It's human nature. So that's my first reaction. Don't do that classification. There are difficult people, but consider that difficult as a difference instead of difficult. And when I get into leadership, that's a particular book I'm going to try and uh, paraphrase it. That a good leader is one who turns clocker, we don't know what clocker is, into an opportunity. So rather than say billion, this is books, yes, but self-awareness how to manage it. We are all
But you know what will happen? When they get you to a hall, would you go? She almost like looking down. And you can't stop her from wearing her high heels. No way. But she's able to tell other men, you know? Yes, no. 
personality test. For most organizations, if you want to go through an MBTI test, you actually pay about five to six hundred dollars. Online, you can actually also Google it and see. There are people who consult and who are MBTI coaches that would administer the test to you. It has about 60 questions, but I think I just ended up with about 20 or no, 30 or 20 something questions for you. But essentially, what MBTI is saying is two things that everything that revolves around personality has two factors perception and judgment. And this is that how you perceive something, how you are aware of something, how you look at something, is going to influence how you judge it or the decision you make about that thing. Did you get this? I bet you to meet you. That how you perceive something would influence the decision that you make or how you will judge that thing. Let me go back to the question, uh, to the example. Good afternoon. <laughs> now, how she perceives that reason that I gave to her? I mean, your awareness, how do you perceive my reason to you? And what would it, what would it make you do? You begin to judge me in your mind. So MBTI, the Maya Priest, Maya Priest is actually a mother and a daughter. They came up with this research and they came up with that. These 16 different personalities. And none of these 16 different personality types is superior to the other. And none of them is pigeonholed to one particular person. Essentially what they are saying is that you can, your personality can cross between any of these and we will go with you through the 16 times and I will give you those uh, questions that you need to answer. But what the summary of what they are saying is that how you perceive something, whether it is a speech or an action, will determine.